What's going on, comic family, and welcome to the Legion of Comics. I'm Mark, and I've got a package in the mail and some empty display shelves I need to fill up since Timeless Season is over. All those books are down, and we got to fill them back up with something. So let's hit that intro, and then we'll see what's going on. All right, welcome back. If you're new to the channel or just checking us out, be sure to hit that subscribe button. Smash that like button real quick for me and hit that notification bell so you know when new videos drop because we have some cool stuff on the way. We're getting close to 150 subscribers, about two away, I think. And as soon as we hit that 200 subscriber mark, we're going to be doing a giveaway. But in the meantime, just sit back and check out some cool stuff because we're going to be opening this package to see what just came in the mail today. And we're going to be filling these display shelves up. So first, I definitely would like to go and get the display shelves up so it's nicer on the eyes while we do the unboxing. So let's take a look at what's going to go on that bottom row real quick. I've got a, uh, got a bunch of slabs back recently from CBCS. I decided to try them out and see what their slabs look like with their new cases and everything and their new labels. And they're very simple. They're definitely clean. The, the, actual, the actual holders are fantastic. They're crystal clear. Nothing, None of these ever shake. No problems at all. The labels all come back perfect. No errors. Uh, I do prefer them to have the white boxes around the grade numbers, but that's not a deal breaker for me, especially if they're just for my PC and I know I'm not getting rid of them, as most of these CBCSs that I have are. So first up on it is that Daredevil number 16, and this is the first time Romita Sr. drew Spider-Man, and Stan Lee used this cover as kind of a test run for him before putting him onto that book for a famous run he did. And this one I got at a really, really good price, sent it off, didn't have it cleaned or pressed, just sent it off to get it encapsulated to protect it, and it came back a 5.5. I'm more than happy with that grade, and it does have on the label first for me to senior Spider-Man art, first appearance of Mass Marauder. So that's definitely a good one, and it is going to go in this corner back here. So by the time I'm done with getting all of these up here, I do believe that what sits on this shelf might cover that one, but that's all right. And then moving on, big Jack Kirby fan, real big Jack Kirby fan, even bigger Etrigan fan. So this was my Demon issue number one that I got for an even better price. Did not get it cleaned or pressed, sent it off, came back a 4.0. Super happy with that. The, uh, the cover's in great shape. The colors are awesome on it, and having it in these holders just makes it really pop. So awesome, awesome book. Very, very happy with it. And, uh, yeah, that's going right here toward the middle where it's more visible. Next up on it, before the uh, Three Jokers book dropped, I went after this book. And it, uh, the value on it is kind of up right now, but none of them are really selling, I don't think. And it is an over, oversized book, square bound. And this is the DC Universe Rebirth number one. It's that fourth printing, that rare one, with the first appearance of the actual Three Jokers. So there that is right there. And obviously, judging from the style and the look of them, the original plan for that Three Jokers, I think, changed as time went on and it got pushed back and stuff. But this is a beautiful book. Out of all the Flashes, Wally West is my favorite. He's my Flash from my childhood. Growing up in the 90s, he, he was definitely established. So I was happy to see him bring him back. Definitely happy with what they've done with him. Been enjoying death metal. And, um, yeah, it's just a beautiful book. And then finally, going on that bottom shelf, this one came back from a grading from when I had the Clayton Crane signing here this past September. I went and took a handful of books. And I had this one signed, and it's remarked by Clayton Crane, and that's Detective Comics issue number 1000. So I got that signature series label, and it is witnessed. It is not a verified signature, but it came back with that uh, signature, the bat symbol, and it has a Julian calendar date. And he did those in the Crane Bow style. So that is a... Very pretty book. There is a virgin variant with a yellow background, but uh, the costume on them is slightly different. I always prefer Batman with the gray and blue, and on the yellow virgin variant, he's wearing the gray and black. So we'll slap that one right there. All right, next shelf. No display in my house would be complete without having Power Rangers properly represented it. So I think I'm going to uh, leave some in the man cave and put some different ones out. And I think we're going to go let's go signature series all the way across the board. So first up, this one was up there, but it's going back up there because I absolutely love this cover. 
It's Mighty Morphin Power Rangers number 40, the Clayton Crane variant, but it's not the standard one from Scorpion. This is the uh, uh, convention exclusive. There's only 100 of these variants made, and this one is double signed by Clayton Crane and Jason David Frank and remarked it's Morphin time in a 9.8. So that one's going right back up. All right, next on there, let's see. This one was one from the Clayton Crane signing. This was also a Scorpion Comics exclusive. I did get the set. This is the Virgin one. I did get them both signed, but I only sent the Virgin off to be slabbed just to kind of go with the other ones I have are Virgins, and I'm going to kind of watch on the watch out for that Green Ranger that Clayton Crane did. I definitely need a 9.8 yellow label, and I haven't seen one come up yet, but this is a Draken New Dawn number one. Yellow label on a 9.8 signed by Clayton Crane. And I got him to sign it in gold to kind of match his armor with the Evo 3 armor. But it's a beautiful cover. Awesome signature as always with Clayton Crane. He's got a clean signature. Throw that one right in the middle there. All right, next on the Power Rangers shelf. This is going to be Mighty Morphin Power Rangers TMNT issue number one. And this is a... Uh, Black Cape Comics exclusive that the artist John Jang did. Fantastic artist. Beautiful style. He's been knocking it out of the park with some Last Ronin variants lately. He did a Mighty Morphin number one variant, which I have on the way as well. But just seeing the turtles there with Raph already flying through the air at the Dragon Zord, it's really awesome. And having the Dragon Zord on there was a must for me. The Green Ranger's always been my favorite Ranger, hands down. Now, this being a CGC, rattles a little bit in there you know they just i don't know what the deal with it is but it's beautiful signature simplistic and awesome yeah love this book the back of it's even cool with the the shell on it you can see the cover image faded into the shell but beautiful book signature series and that'll complete that shelf out And I already had a good idea. Last time I had some collectibles spacing out some of the stuff, and I wanted to do that again because I do have some pop figures. I'm very specific about which ones I buy, and I do have all the Tommy Pops from Power Rangers. I didn't go ham and get all the Power Ranger Pops by any means, but I did focus on just Tommy Pops. So I'm going to throw that number 360 from the Mighty Morphin Green Ranger and from the Power Rangers number 17, Lord Draken up there. This is a little space filler. It looks good. So that top shelf, the Covenant top shelf where the cream of the crop goes, big Power Ranger guy, even bigger Incredible Hulk guy. So my Incredible Hulk issue number 102 is going back up there. And uh, Marvel had this going with a lot of their titles. This is issue 102, but it's really issue number one of his first ongoing series since the original six issues. It was uh, Tales to Astonish for a while with uh, different characters in it, and that just be turned to Tales to Astonish featuring the Submariner and the Incredible Hulk. But going from issue 101 to issue 102, Hulk's popularity grew, and he took over the title, and they relabeled it. The Incredible Hulk kept the numbering the same, and so this is his big premiere issue. So this is uh, for those of us like me who do not own, nor can I afford an Incredible Hulk issue number one right now. This one will do for now. So that one's taking the top shelf. Now, I might not be able to afford an Incredible Hulk number one right now, but I did hear recently hit the jackpot. Big shout out and thank you to Paul at the Augusta Book Exchange because next on that shelf, of course, is the Incredible Hulk issue number 181 in a 4.5. Perfect grade for me for my price range. That's about as high end of a price range as I could do with this book, so it worked out perfectly. And me and Paul worked it out. He, yeah, I got it from my local comic shop. The owner there had it. He had sent it off at a convention here recently. And it just came back. And yeah, I, I love this book, man. I didn't know that I would ever actually own this one. It was one of those ones I love to talk about, love to think about, but there it is. So it's going on that coveted top shelf. But again, now we've got a gap to fill. So Got the perfect thing. Last time I had a couple of uh, Marvel maquette statues up there. I had two of the eight-inch Mego figures, so I figured I would take my 1978 full-size original Hulk Mego and get him up there. 
as well as my 1993 Toy Biz Marvel Superhero Incredible Hulk signed by Stan Lee. I went to the Heroes Convention in North Carolina in 2013, took a few items with me, got this one signed. Love it. So those are going up there right now. That doesn't look bad at all. I'm liking it. So now I have a, I have another one that's been up there that I'm going to get up there, and a brand new one that I just got back from grading. I'm going to get up there. But before I put them up there, I do want to say they're going on the shelf and they're going to be held up by these wonderful comic stands. And I got this from a seller on Instagram. His name is Kid Rano Prince on Instagram. There's his name. Check out his Instagram. They're really cool. They hold raw books. They hold books and top loaders. And they also hold slabs. They have weights in the bottom. Uh, regular books aren't really going to do anything. Tipping over slabs, you got to be a little bit careful when you set them in there. Make sure you don't just toss them in there and let them go. Set them in there easy, then back off, and they're good to go. Now, CBCS and CGC books are a little bit different. The holders on the CGC are flat, smooth across the bottom. CBCSs, there is a slight little lean to them. So you do have to be even more careful putting a CGC into one of these specifically. And you want to make sure it has that, that nice angle before you set it and let it go. But first up, going in the display, it's already up there. This book was up there before, and this is my Mighty Morphin Power Rangers Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles number one crossover as well. This is the second print, Shredder holding the Green Ranger. Now, this was kind of the grail book from that mini series. It seems to be the one that holds the most value and commands the most money. So once you get it set, they're typically really good. Like I said, I do believe that a Daredevil will get covered up, but it's all right because I do have friends over and stuff that are able to still take a look and see all the stuff that's up there. And I might end up moving it. Who knows? But uh, second one, again, Kid Rotto Prince. And uh, he can custom make these in anything you want. He's got a lot of them already prefab that look awesome with different uh, trade dresses on him and stuff. Or you can send him a picture and he'll just 3D print and hand paint your own. But lastly, last book going up, and I just got this one back. This is Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, issue number zero, the one in 100 variant. And again, this is kind of the grail book for the main series. It, uh, it's not a cheap book at all. And coming back in 9.8, uh, I think the Go Collect GPA on it was like at 250 when I checked when I got it back. But uh, yeah, you can find it for a little more than that, a little less than that on eBay, depending on how your luck goes. So let's take this awesome stand from Kid Rano Prince. And then let's get this awesome book up there. See, not difficult. Just set it, lean it. I'm not sure if my shelf is perfectly level. It's definitely homemade. One of my good friends made it for me. So that might have factored into a little teeterness. But that set up there really easily. Just as soon as you get that base set, I just let it go and it's good to go. So we got five Power Ranger goodness books. We've got a Marvel book tucked away in the corner there, some great DC, and then my obsession, my love for the Hulk, properly represented at the very top. So now that the background is set and our eyes aren't strained looking at a bad wall, let's check out what's in this package. As you see now, it comes from Big Time Collectibles. I've dealt with them in the past when I ordered my Draken New Doll number one John Jang variant from them. And uh, they've got some really cool exclusives that come up. They just had a last run in number two drop yesterday that sold out immediately. I was lucky enough to get one. And I think I've got three orders on the way from them, counting this one. So two left on the way from them. But uh, and if you want to see what else that I've gotten from them, you can check out previous videos. Oh, yeah. I remember that. Yeah, the packing popcorn. This is the only other place I know that uses packing popcorn. So they come in these nice comic trays. I think I even took one of these to the crane signing and reused it as a little store folio, if you will. But uh, checking out what we got in here. All right, one book, two book. And I did get this set for this exclusive because I needed – the limited trade dress. There wasn't a straight virgin with a lot of DC stuff. I've noticed that they do the uh, trade dress and the limited trade dress, and I absolutely had to have the limited trade dress. But 
here it is. The John Jane Rorschach issue number one. And that is a beautiful cover. You can see the mask getting distorted and stretched in between each individual finger down there. His art style is awesome. He comes from uh, the movie industry. He was a movie concept artist for years before he started doing uh, comic books, man. And this art style really shines on some of these exclusive covers. That is just beautiful. And then they have the trade dress one as well. And this is an exclusive trade dress even to this issue. It is not the standard trade dress that goes on the series, but it definitely goes well with it. Got a little black label logo down here, I believe. Yeah, the black label logo matches the same color that's inside of the R and the H. And uh, yeah, so uh, me and Brent, I, I found these. I, I messaged Brent and showed him, and he mentioned how he'd only wanted a, as a, at that point, I had only seen big times. Uh, Dragon Jang book, and I started looking more and watching at their shop, and I noticed this one coming. So as soon as I saw it, I sent it to Brent because I knew that he's also a big Watchmen fan, as am I. And uh, he saw it, he thought it was awesome, and he said that he liked the trade dress one. So I just asked him, like, if you just want to go in on one. So I'm keeping the limited trade dress, which I believe is beautiful. I love the green on the limited trade there. And he's going with the trade dress one because he was a big fan of this style of the trade dress, so it worked out perfectly. But that's the mail haul. That's the display shelves. Remember, if you haven't already, be sure to like and subscribe to the channel. We're getting close to that 200 subscriber giveaway. You don't want to miss out, so hit the notification bell. And on your way out the door, be sure to hit that like button. We appreciate it a lot. And uh, keep on the lookout because we have our At Week's End video. It's going to be our spoiler-filled look back at this week in comics, collectibles, and more. So until then, keep reading comics, keep collecting, and remember, we 